for joining us for the January edition of Broncos Country Connected. With the playoffs out of reach and coaching search already underway, the Denver Broncos took to Empower Field on Sunday with one goal in mind, to give Broncos Country something to cheer about. And that they did. In the 2022 season finale against the Chargers, the Broncos finished with 471 yards of offense, which not only marked a season high, but the most offensive production we've seen since Peyton Manning's final regular season game in 2016. Here's a look back at Denver's final game of 2022, as captured by Broncos director of production, Austin Brink. Beautiful day here in the Mile High City on this, the 8th of January, 2023. This will be the 126th meeting between the Broncos and the Chargers. Denver has dominated the series in the Mile High City against the Chargers. The Broncos have won four of the last seven matchups between themselves and the Chargers. Chargers have won the last three of four, winning the last two in that overtime victory earlier this season. Meaningless game in the standings, but it means a lot to the fans that have supported this team. Denver down seven, nothing but on the move. Latavius Murray to the right, takes the handoff running left. Murray with a big hole, and the big back has some speed. Murray's loose inside the 20, pulled down at the 19-yard line. First down, Chargers at the Denver 48. Eckler has the ball, knocked free, and it looks like the Broncos have it. And a huge play for this Broncos defense. And for Jewel, that would be his second fumble recovery of the season. Tavis Murray walks into the end zone, slams the ball against the south stands. Touchdown, Denver. Ten seconds to go in the half. First and goal at the two. Play fake. Russ sets in the pocket, throws the ball, pass caught. Touchdown, Denver. That is Eric Tomlinson. If you think that the Broncos are not playing all out, look at this hit. Wow. Herbert's in the shotgun. Hands it off to Echo. Running off left guard. He took a huge shot from Josie Jewell. Jewell just crushed him. 467 yards of offense for the Broncos. This is a good win for the Broncos in a really tough year. Denver wins it 31 to 28. In the locker room post game, wide receiver Jerry Judy was recognized after nearly reaching 1,000 yards receiving for the season, having a career high 154 yards receiving and a touchdown on Sunday. As was Latavius Murray, the 32 year old running back who was picked up on waivers in early October, rushed for over 100 yards. And those were just two of Denver's game ball recipients. First of all, I'm so happy for you men. In fact, it's it's joy. That's what it is. It's joy for you men. You earned the celebration. This man at a career high 193 yards from the line of scrimmage. Jerry Judy got it! Yeah. 103 yards rushing, 6.9. he called got us 31 points 471 total yards and the season best 205 rushing yards just an hour yeah! first of all you know these last two weeks you guys could have given up but you didn't you kept fighting working together all the players all the coaches our ownership group couldn't be more proud of you for doing that. You got a win today for that, so thank you. We also have a coach who's been a coach for 44 years, 22 years in the NFL, and today he got his first win as a head coach. Let's give it up for the oh, I just want to say how grateful I am for the opportunity. So thank you, Greg Banner. Thank you for the whole family. Thank you to George. George, great job. And to you men, you know, it's been a tough two weeks in y'all, and as I said before, you're the ones that had the most investment, and I, I thank you for this moment. I'll never forget it. 
And this is just one of those NFL games that people write off, but they don't understand how meaningful it is for us. And so I hope you draw something from this, these last two weeks and understand how well you can work when you work together. And uh, I, I don't say this lightly, but I love you all. Denver's 31-28 win over L.A. was just their fifth and an otherwise disappointing season. But throughout the year, we saw flashes of brilliance in all three phases. Legendary voice of Broncos football on KOA Radio, Dave Logan, was in the broadcast booth and called every play throughout the season. As we head to break, here are some of the Broncos' most memorable moments from 2022 as Dave Logan saw them. Buy some time, throws the check down, is caught, 10, 15, 20, fumbles the football, and the Broncos have it. Steps up, floats to a wide open receiver, gets it to 15. How about a welcome to the NFL drive for the rookie out of UCLA? Throws a ball that is intercepted, intercepted by Josie friggin' Jewel. <laughs> Brett Rippon steps up, throws a ball that is caught. Touchdown, Jerry Judy! Screen set up, and this is going to be Marlon Mack. Marlon Mack inside the 45 of the Chiefs. To the 5! Touchdown, Denver! 66 yards! Rippon with a play fake, and then kept his back to the line of scrimmage for a good second and a half, and the Cardinals completely bit. Rolls to his left, throws a ball that is intercepted in the end zone. That is Justin Simmons. That is his sixth interception of the season. Runs the option left side. Russell's got it hole. 10, 5, touchdown, Denver. DT was our number one guy. His play spoke for itself. Thomas is there and makes the catch. He could do just about anything on the football field. Demarius Thomas, out over the 45. Here we go. We set out for him to be the most dominant receiver here. Pass caught one handed the catch of the night. He was like electrifying. That's all we need to do. He was one of a kind. DT's got it. Touchdown, Denver. He was a defensive coordinator's worst nightmare, but for me, boy, he was just a gift. Welcome back to Broncos Country Connected. This season, Broncos safety Justin Simmons recorded 69 tackles, broke up seven passes, and tallied a career-high six interceptions in just 12 games. A Pro Bowl caliber player on the field, a loving husband and father of three off of it. From the outside, it seems like Justin has it all. But on the inside, he's just like many of us, trying to find peace within our own minds. Justin is a strong advocate for mental health awareness and is doing his part to end the stigma around it. Recently, Justin shared some insight into his personal battle with mental health and how he hopes that his vulnerability can help others. My early memories with mental health were you know negative ones you never really talked about it because you know for me growing up like you know you were a man you wanted to strive to be a man and you know men don't talk about their problems and uh, I face a lot of challenges you know personally with mental health I think in this profession uh, it's hard when especially when you're not winning um, and it just your whole life you know like a uh, half of your year is consumed with you know trying to find ways to win football games and so when you kind of stack those things on uh, years on top of each other and not winning um, you know there can be a little bit of a toll and so um, you know for me with the constant change in the building there's so much new and there's so much going on but yet we you know still weren't winning um, you know as one of the leaders you know bearing a lot of that you know on my shoulders and trying to carry that uh, was difficult there was a point where I never acknowledged it and I just kept trying to put my head down and one foot in front of the other and um, your stuff in your personal life that goes on right football is only half your day when I go home I'm a father I'm a husband you could just feel a lot of the times like your world just collapsing in on you um, you know it may look like you're holding it all together but you're not you know the Damar Hamlin um, incident was, uh, it was, I mean, pure tragedy. And uh, the realization that, like, I mean, we do play a barbaric sport, and it's okay to not be okay with what you saw and what would happen. And those conversations need to be had. And if there is a player out there that saw that and is struggling, uh, it's okay to say, that bothered me and I'm not okay. Because if your mental is not right, and you can't mentally go and do your job at a high level, you'll never be able to perform, no matter 
how physically strong you are, no matter how good you were at your job beforehand, you'll never be able to perform at the level you were if you don't have your mental right. I use a bunch of different resources. Um, one of the biggest ones is White Flag and um, you know, having the opportunity to um, have an app and use it anonymously, knowing that there's someone on the other, other side of it that maybe has gone through something similar, um, and maybe has gone and has come out on the other side as a positive. I think having the opportunity, like I said, to have an app where you can explain and, and say those things out loud and not be judged, not be ridiculed. Um, no one knows your name, no one knows how much money you make, no one knows your social status. And they just know you're going through a difficult time and want to be heard. And uh, sometimes that's all it takes. And um, there's obviously uh, you know, a lot more detail. There's more professional help on there. There's, uh, there's an opportunity to uh, rate your crisis, you know, so um, people can understand like, you know, this may be a thing you've been going through a long time. This may be really urgent. This may just feel like, you know, I just wanted to kind of say something. It doesn't feel urgent, but I feel like I should say something. Um, so I'm thankful for White Flag and the opportunity they provide to be able to, you know, anonymously be able to share you know, how you're feeling when you probably can't share with anyone else. There's so many people that are dealing with so much and like myself, you know, before, and they're just not willing to share because the idea is everyone's going through something and, you know, your something may not be as big as someone else's something, which uh, could be the furthest thing from the truth. You know, if you're going through something and it is bothering you and it's affecting you, um, it matters. And um, it matters to try and help you walk through it. Mental health is serious and you have to take it serious. It's the only way you'll be able to, you know, break the stigma and, and not only help yourself, but you'll be breaking generational curses as well. So for the future of mental health, man, I just, I envision it just being open, honest, vulnerable, and uh, just continuing to keep going up that, that trajectory. Justin is the Chief Advocacy Officer for the White Flag app and is dedicated to continuing the conversation about mental health. You could download the app today for help with your own mental health journey. Still to come here on Broncos Country Connected, we'll check in with the Denver 7 crew for more on what you might expect throughout the Broncos offseason. This segment brought to you by Checklinks, the proud protein partner of the Denver Broncos. I loved watching him play because he was fearless and he just was relentless and he made it look easy. Demarius Thomas, out on the 45, here we go! He could do just about anything on the football field. DJ breaks the tackle inside the 10, touchdown Denver! He was one of a kind. Everybody in his life was special. He was a great leader. The best teammate. DT's got it. His smile lit up a room. He loved kids and he loved to give back. Boy, he was just a gift. sticking with us for this final segment of Broncos Country Connected. With interim head coach Jerry Rosberg at the helm for the final two games of the season, there's no doubt the heart of this Broncos team was on display as they nearly knocked off the AFC West champions and beat a divisional rival Week 18. A positive sign for anyone considering Denver as the next stop for their coaching career. For some of the biggest takeaways from the Broncos' win over the Chargers and some of the possible head coaching candidates, let's check in with Lionel Bienvenue, Troy Rank, and Ryan Harris. Thanks, Alexis, and welcome to our Denver 7 segment brought to you by 1-800-GOT-JUNK. Well, guys, the season is over for the Broncos, and now the crazy season <laughs> begins. Uh, looking for a new head coach here for the second time in less than a year. We'll dive deep into that in a minute. But first, Troy, the Broncos ended with that win over the Chargers. Did the last couple of games against the Chiefs and the Chargers give you some optimism for next season, especially when it comes to Russell Wilson? Well, certainly they showed that they cared, and they could have mailed it in. They had nothing to play for except avoiding 13 losses, which would have been the all-time worst number for this franchise. But what I saw from this team is complimentary football, that they weren't sabotaging themselves on special teams necessarily. They were showing they could finish defensively. But as it relates to Russell Wilson, yes, you saw a blueprint, in my opinion, Lionel. That is a guy with a heavy run attack. You get him outside the pocket. You do play action. It sets up those deep strikes. He had three past receptions of 50 plus yards and you say Troy that looks like exactly what he did in Seattle yes Lionel they need to go back to what he did in Seattle move the pocket play action run the ball Rossberg and Outen they figured <laughs> it out here uh, Ryan when a head coaching candidate looks at the game tape from those Chiefs games and the Chargers game will he see something that says yeah 
I can fix this. I see what needs to be done, especially with Russ. Absolutely, and I think it starts with being a new voice. Clearly, the last few games, Russ had a new voice around him. His eyes were different in coverage, and he was using the quarterback option, something I've been calling for since week one, and they used it early and often. So absolutely do you have talent there at Russell Wilson, and you see some room for growth, but you also see some huge room for growth for Jerry Judy, Corlin Sutton, Greg Dulcich. So offensively, there are enough pieces there. You're going to get Javante Williams back. And then defensively, you have a safety who tied the NFL for most interceptions with six in Justin Simmons. And oh, by the way, he missed six games. You got Baron Browning coming along. So there are enough good pieces here to compete early and often next year. All right, coaching search. We have names, and uh, Greg Penner's not messing around here. Troy, it's early. The interview process is just beginning. But give us your top three choices and why you believe they'd be able to come in here and turn things around. Well, they're basically swinging for the fences. I like their choices. For me, I like Dan Quinn last year. I thought he was going to be the guy because of his relationship with George Payton and the fact that he's bringing energy, and he knows Russell Wilson, so he could fit there. So I think he's the dark horse, the sleeper here. But then it goes Jim Harbaugh. And the reason I like Harbaugh and I give him a slight edge over Sean Payton is because of the fact it doesn't involve draft pick compensation. He would run a defense similar to the one they're already running now, and you can get him right away. You can hire him right away. He is dependent on his staff. Would that be Greg Roman, an offensive coordinator? But you get Jim Harbaugh, you have to have the right staff around him. Sean Payton is the big well out there, Lionel. I know you love Sean Payton, but will they have enough reasons for him to come here? They will financially, but will he see a fit here? I'm not sure he will. Ryan, what does your uh, wish list look like when it comes to the next head coach? Well, I like Leslie Frazier. That's a defensive coordinator right now for the Buffalo Bills. He took a team with the Vikings to the playoffs with Christian Ponder, a quarterback that's no longer in the NFL. He's learned as well. I also like Cliff Kingsbury, just released. That's a player, that's a coach who I say he had some success, knows how to get an offense going. I've talked to players there. They love the style of offense he runs. So there are some options there. Of course, Sean Payton's going to be at the top of everyone's list. He's going to get top dollar. But I'll tell you what, I'd also give Bill Belichick a call and say, hey, Bill, how happy are you at the Patriots? Him and Robert Kraft, maybe they're on the same page, maybe not. Worth a call to find out. Bill Belichick coming to the Broncos? Hey, Troy said swing for the fences. Let's <laughs> swing, baby. That's a little different, isn't it? Yeah, that's Babe Ruth swing for the fences there. <laughs> and Troy, look, the ownership group, uh, Greg Penner, they can say to anyone, Sean Payton, you are the king. This is your kingdom. Whatever it takes, you're going to get it financially. How important is that? How big of a draw is that for a head coaching candidate? Well, the, I get asked this on Twitter all the time. Why would so-and-so come to the Broncos? I could give you maybe 250 million reasons. <laughs> if you go to Sean Payton, last year for the Dolphins, he was offered, in my understanding, four-year, 100 million. So you could go to him and say, we'll give you 10-year, 250 million. That kind of money talks. That is lifetime security for generations and also buys you time if the Russell Wilson experiment doesn't work out. So that is how you get a name like that in the door. You have a fan base that demands winning that expects to be in the playoffs that doesn't want to hear excuses about playing against the Chiefs so not only do you have the players but you have the ownership group that can give you the latitude you need and you have a fan base that wants to win and that's not going to be sitting idly by and real coaches real championship level coaches they want that pressure all right guys thanks as always great insight and information and that's it for us here at Denver 7 Alexis back to you Thanks, guys. Before we go, the 2022 season marked the 25th anniversary of the Broncos' first world championship. To celebrate, the Broncos broadcast department will be releasing an hour-long documentary, Super Bowl 32: The Revenge Tour. This program includes more than 20 of the Broncos' biggest stars reliving their historic Super Bowl run back in 1997. Here's a sneak peek of what's to come. You really want to know how we felt? That game to this day still bothers me. We were coming off a 96 season where we were really disappointed. You know, we had high hopes and Jacksonville came in. On that one day, we weren't at our best and they beat us. Left a sour taste in our mouth. You know, we always had that thought of what happened the year before and we're not gonna go through that again. It hardened us up for the Revenge Tour. It also showed us that we could do it. We really had something special here. Fires and completes to Rod Smith. Smith is going! Touchdown, Denver! It was really, truly a team. 
for the first time, I really felt the old cliche that they say, I felt it in my heart, I felt it mentally, physically, emotionally. We were a family and we played that way all the way through. We're a different team, we had a different mindset, and we went in there with a singular focus. It was a combination of power, and it was a combination of finesse. And here's the thing, we let them pick how they wanted to get beat. It's amazing how long he stayed the course for this organization in this great city, and I got to see that. Trying to draw him offside. Every time we went to a game, I knew I was prepared to the umpteenth degree. So I felt very fortunate to have a, a team that was mentally tough. It was such a tight-knit group, and friendships have lasted. But then you look back once it's over, and you say, man, that was, that was something really special. If you win the Super Bowl, it's forever. They can never not call you champion at the end of that. This team is not better than us. They're not even good. I finished what we started. Now we can run inside the 10, head first. Be sure to follow at Broncos TV on Instagram and Twitter for the release date of Super Bowl 32, The Revenge Tour, which will be airing later this month on the Broncos YouTube channel. That's all the time we have for Broncos Country Connected. As always, thanks so much for watching.